He said, I will not remain in the ashes. <laughs> Tell somebody, I will not remain in the ashes. I will not remain in the ashes. The Spirit of God blows in me. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your revelation, for your word that gives us life. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence. Caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Say, I'm not here for blessings Oh, I'm Say, Jesus, you don't owe me. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. We just want 
I promise you if you get a million dollars tomorrow, that million dollars is only going to feel like a million dollars for a few months. I don't need a million dollars to know that that's how many dollars is going to feel. You will get the guy of your dreams. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I promise you, you're gonna be like, oh Lord. Yes. But that feeling of newness, that feeling of, oh, I finally got that thing, it's going to die. And it's not going to satisfy you, it's not going to fill you. But I guarantee you that half an hour in the presence of the Lord leaves you feeling like you need to go back for 10 more hours. Half hour in the presence of God has you feeling that work like, how can I go to the bathroom for money? I need to go, I need to tap in for another five minutes. Five minutes in the presence of God has your life trained. Do. We only want you. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord somebody. Praise the Lord somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord somebody. something to replace God? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She said nothing else can do. And here's the deal. I, can, I, can I keep it real with y'all like I always do? Always. The reason why I know nothing else will do because I've tried it. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm speaking from experience. I've tried a lot of things to replace the hole that, that only God can fill. Yes. Yes. And, and before you sit down, I want you to just Think about, think about being fulfilled. I, I want you to think about the feeling you get when you're content and you're full. And I want you to believe that God is that. I want you to believe that Jesus is all you need. See, it, it may be hard to believe it because there's some things you don't have. And, you, and you're thinking to yourself, well, if I just get this, this might do it. But like Ceci said, you'll get that and be looking for something else in a little while. But I promise you, I promise you that when you get Jesus, when you get the Lord in your heart, you will never thirst again. Amen. You will never search again. You will never look again. And, I, and I, I, I promise you this, that when you get Jesus in your heart, you're going to find things that just don't add up. Come on, somebody. It just don't add up. It just don't add up. So I want you to close your eyes and lift your hands right now. And if you are here, and you hear my voice, I want you to rededicate or dedicate yourself to him. Hallelujah. You don't have to say anything. 
You don't have to open up your mouth. If you want to, by God, uh, it, it, the choice is yours. But I want you to, I want you to get this internally. Because these things happen in the spirit. How many times have we opened our mouth and something came out but nothing was felt? Mm. Nothing was internal. Mm. I want you to feel it in your heart. Yes. Father God, in this moment, I want you to fill them, God. They're dedicating a space for you. They're dedicating a space for you, God. A space that only you can fill. And Lord, I want you to change their lives forever. From this day forward, change their lives forever, God. Change their lives forever, God. Quench their thirst forever, God. Fulfill their need for anything forever, God. We just want you, God. Nothing else will do, God. We just want you. We just want you, God. Nothing else will do, God. We just want you. We just, we just need you, God. It's not even a want, Lord. We need you, God. We need you, God. We need you. We need you. We need you. I dare you to say inside your heart, I dare you to tell God you need him. I dare you to tell God I need you. I dare you to tell God to come into me and to my heart, God. Quench my thirst, God. Fill me, God. Fill me, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Father, help me to preach your word. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we had a lot going on. So that leaves me with about 15 minutes. Can I get 15 minutes? And we got a lot more to go on today. Celebrating Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for Stephanie. Amen. Amen. I just take her wherever I go. <laughs> if you need a hype, listen. This is, a hype man is just something special. You can always rely on him. Resurrection Sunday. This is the day that the Lord brought back Jesus from the dead. Now I know it sounds like something that's out of a comic book. But if you think about God and you think about all of his miraculous things, the reason why it sounds like it's a comic book because it's God. <laughs> it, it sounds uncommon to us. It, it sounds far-fetched to our, our normal minds. But I don't find it any coincidence that Resurrection Sunday uh, with, the, with the, what society calls Easter Sunday, I find it to be no surprise that this is the day that the most people come to church. Mm. Not... Not Christmas Eve, not Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Resurrection Sunday has more seats filled than all of the three combined. Mm -hmm. These are statistics. Mm -hmm. And I find it to be no coincidence, and I know that a lot of people want to show off their little outfits. <laughs> I get that part. But even in that, there's some significance, whether you want to believe it or not. There's some newness to, 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 to what we're talking about here. See, I understand things in the spirit, and I know that God is doing something on Resurrection Sunday in the spirit. Yes, yes. Resurrection Sunday is typically the place where people renew their, their vows to God. They, 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 they renew their commitments to God. Resurrection Sunday is usually when you're able to get somebody who would never go to church, and they might even come into church on Resurrection Sunday for you. So I know that there's an open door. You ain't got to plan nobody. <laughs> I know that there's an open door in the spirit. Because I know that there's something about when Jesus was resurrected. Yes. I know that there's a power that is attached to that. Yes. 
Whether you believe it or not, there's a power that is attached to resurrection. And I am here to tell you one thing and one thing only. The resurrection is real. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And because the resurrection is real, I'm here only to praise God. Amen. Whether you believe it or not, <laughs> no one's here without a resurrection. Right. I know I know. sometimes I preach a little too simple, but I just want to keep it plain. None of us are here without a resurrection. You think it was your parents coming together and birthing you and making you and all that good stuff, but your parents are not here, and your parents' parents are not here without a resurrection. There was a correlation between the resurrection and where we are today. The title of our message is called The Great Escape. And we're going to go and enjoy an escape room after this. And some of us are going to be in there longer than we're supposed to be. <laughs> and if I know anything, they're probably going to kick us out because our time ran out. But I want to highlight a couple of things before we get there. Jesus' birth, Jesus' birth gave us hope. When Jesus was born, he was born to only become a sacrifice. His birth gave us hope that we would have a different ending than the one that came through Adam. When Adam sinned in the garden, death came into the world. Death without resurrection came into the world. When Jesus was born, hope came into the world. When Jesus gave up his life on the cross, redemption came into the world. We were, we were able to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. When Jesus died, his blood gave us an opportunity to be redeemed. When God looks at us, he looks at us through the blood that was shed on the cross. But when Jesus was resurrected, this is what gave us victory. I, I, I know it's hard to understand, but his birth gave us hope. His death gave us redemption, but his resurrection gave us the victory. Yes. I, I need you to get this today. Today we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. But more importantly, we, we celebrate the victory that comes through the resurrection. Amen. Because what you don't understand is that to be resurrected, you had to escape something. Yeah. And what Jesus escaped was something that has never been escaped before. Yes. And that's death. death. Mm. You're saying to yourself, well, Pastor, no, there's some other people that have been revived before. How could you say that resurrection, uh, how could you say that he escaped death? Great question. Don't worry, I'll tell you. <laughs> you're thinking about Lazarus, and you're thinking about the, the, the boy who, who fell, and you think about all these people that Jesus came in and they resurrected. Mm -hmm. I want to let you know on a little secret. Those people were re revived. They were not resurrected. Mm -hmm. And how can I say that? Because those, those people died again. Yes, yes, yes. See, 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 you cannot be resurrected if there's an ending. Right. <laughs> they were revived. Jesus brought them back to life. But I guarantee you they're not here still. Jesus was resurrected, which means he's still here. He's still here. Resurrection means new body. Not just a new life, but a new body. It means a new position. I want to let you know on a secret. There is going to be a day where those who believe in God will be resurrected. Amen. You will have a new body. You have a new life. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 2.13 says it like this. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 2.13. 
He also said, I will put my trust in him. That is, I and the children of God has given me because God's children are human beings mm -hmm. made of flesh and blood. The son also became flesh and blood for only as a human being could he die. And only by dying, listen to this, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil. Jesus. Amen. Who had the power of death. Who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Jesus came not only to set the captives free, but he, he came to steal the power of death. Amen. He came to take back what was his father's in the first place. And then the Bible says in, in Matthew 28, 1 through 6, it says, early Sunday morning, right about now, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> early Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the, and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said he would. <clears throat> Come see where his body was lying. The, the part I want to I want to harp on today is he is risen from the dead, just as he said he would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See the part that we, we we seem to miss sometimes when we talk about Jesus' resurrection is the fact that he told us it would happen. The fact that he kept his promise. We miss that from time to time because we, we, we've been lied to before. Someone has told us something and it didn't happen. So therefore we look at this in a different way. And what I'm coming to tell you today is that he kept his promise. Yes, he did. So if he kept his promise in his resurrection, he will keep his promise to you in all that he said he will do for you. Amen. Not to mention that if he kept his promise in resurrection, he also kept it, he will also keep his promise that you will too will be resurrected. God. You don't have to worry about death when your heart is with God. You don't have to worry about what happens after when your heart is with God. Not, not only that. If anyone here ever ever face death? Ever look ever look death in the face? Okay, let's get let's get a little deeper. Anyone here ever been resurrected from anything? Anyone ever come back from anything? Anyone ever been low down deep in the gutter dirt and come back from something? Anyone who has ever had the stone uh, that covering their body? You you were halfway into the grave and God brought you back. For those that have been resurrected, you understand the significance of what God is already doing. Now, if you've never faced any of these things, it may be hard for you to understand. Thank you, Lord. But I want to tell you this. My God. I hear you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. I want to tell you this. Whether you know it or not, you faced it. Mm. Every day you wake up and you walk out of your house, you face a potential opportunity for the grave. Mm. Amen. See, see. That was the time when you were supposed to get excited because you're sitting yes. here right now Come instead on. of sitting in a group. Yes, hallelujah. You've already been resurrected. Yes. Yes. Because the fact of the matter is you're here now. Yes. You, 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 you're you in these seats. You're taking up these seats. You put on your fresh clothes and your little, your little deodorant because you are here. 
Amen. Every day you wake up, you have risen. Mm. It's another day and another opportunity to give God the glory for keeping his promise. Yes. Yes. So true. Lazarus was raised. The young man in the city of Nain was raised. But the difference is they weren't resurrected. Mm -hmm. Jesus' birth gives us hope. Jesus' death gives us redemption. But Jesus' resurrection gives us victory. How many are excited about the victory today? Amen. Amen. The angel told Mary, Jesus' body is over there. If, if, if Mary would have went to the grave and rolled back the stone and the angel would have said to Mary, you're looking for Jesus? His body's right there. If, she would have, if the angel would have said that, we would have all been in trouble. We wouldn't be here. But the fact of the matter is, there was no body to be found. Yes, yes. The resurrection means there was no victim, only a victor. Yes. See, Mary, they went there looking for a victim. But the, because they didn't find anything, that means they found victory. Death is the only thing guaranteed for them. Death is the only thing that is guaranteed for us. But for them that believe in Christ Jesus, resurrection is also guaranteed. Amen. There's some guarantees that are made when God showed us that he was not in the grave. God, Jesus not being in the grave is an automatic guarantee for you. Because guess what? Everything Jesus did when he came was an example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. The example of him not being in the grave is an example to you for when you go. Yep. Amen. Thank you, God. First Corinthians 15, uh, 54 says, Then when our dying bodies have been transformed, somebody say transformed. Transform. When our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die. This scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, yeah. oh death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death. And the law gives sin its power. But thank God, somebody say thank God. thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. I love when the word preaches for itself. I love when the word has its own message in it. I want you to leave here understanding one thing. One thing and one thing only. You have the victory. Yeah. Amen. There's something Thank you, Jesus. There's something amazing about knowing the end result. Mm -hmm. There's something amazing about knowing that victory belongs to us. Yes. There's something there's something amazing about knowing that I that we win. Yeah. We win. Yeah. We win. Yeah. Victory belongs to Jesus, so victory belongs yeah. to us. Yeah. He, he, when, 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 when death was when death was on his was on his back, Jesus said, "Listen, death, you have no power over me. Victory belongs to me." Many of us have experienced death in some way, shape, or form. But I want you to understand that even in that, you have the victory. You have the victory. You are a victor. You are a winner. You have been raised from all kinds of things. That means you are a victor. That means when, when, when it's all said and done, we win. God is trying to show us through an empty tomb that victory belongs to us. If that's not enough to get you excited, I don't know what is. But here's the deal. I didn't come to get you excited today. I come to praise the name of the Lord. Because I know that I have victory. So whether you 
you praise him or not, I came here to praise him because I know that I have victory. I know that no matter what comes in front of me, I have victory. I no matter what comes in front of me, I have victory. I know that no matter who comes in front of me, I have victory. I don't matter, it doesn't matter what it looks like. I have victory. I know I know the score may be in their favor right now, but I got victory. I know what the end result is gonna be. I know what the end result is gonna be. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the score is right now. Hallelujah. We win. Yes. Doesn't matter what your body feels right now. You win. Yes. It doesn't matter the pain, the ail that you feel right now. We win. Yes. It doesn't matter who we lost, but we win. Yes. Hallelujah. We win. We win. We win. We've escaped. We've escaped that. Hallelujah. We've escaped it. Hallelujah. We've escaped it. We've escaped the shackles of death. We've escaped the shackles of death. I want you to understand what I'm saying to you. This is the great escape. You've escaped it. Listen, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen. You've already won. We've escaped it. I joked earlier. Stand to your feet. I joked earlier saying that we were going to go to an escape room and some of us are going to be in there longer than we're supposed to be. And that's probably going to happen. But the reason why I said that is because now that you understand that you have the victory, I don't want you to be in those shackles longer than you have to. Amen. You don't need to be in that place of bondage longer than you have to. Yes. We win. Those that are on this side, those that have Jesus in our heart, win. Glory to you, Father. We are fulfilled in Christ Jesus. We are victor victorious in Christ Jesus. Yes. We win because He won. Yes. We win because the tomb was empty. We win because the, the, the stone was rolled back and the angel and Mary couldn't find anything. We win because he won. Hallelujah. Don't sit there. I want you from this day forward, listen to me closely. I want you from this day forward to walk in victory. Yes. Walk like you won. Yes. There's a certain level of confidence that God's people are supposed to have. Yes. There's a certain level of confidence. And I'm not talking about arrogance or cockiness. I'm talking about there's a certain level of confidence that God's people are supposed to have. And the confidence that you're supposed to have comes in the grave. It comes in the empty tomb. It comes in what Jesus has already done. That is your confidence. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So when they say... No, you tell them we won. Yes. <laughs> when they say we ain't got no room for you, you tell them we won. Right. When they deny you, you tell them we won. Right. And you tell them that the victory belongs to Jesus. Yes. Right. Father God, I thank you for this word. I thank you for your people. Lord, I pray that they will have a renewed idea about their walk in you. I pray that they will never feel defeated. And I pray that even when defeat comes, even when that spirit of death raises its evil head, they believe and understand that they have victory. Lord, make them victorious. Help them be victorious in all that they do. And Lord, even... When the score is not on their side, help them to understand that the victory is on their side. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You know, God is not just in the business of resurrecting us. He's also in the business of resurrecting dreams and hopes and purpose and promise. He's in the business of resetting time, redeeming our time. Some of us feel like it's too late for me. 
God can resurrect anything you lay at his feet, anything you want. And, you, and you're like, I can't have that no more. God is in the business of being like, I could do that again and again and again and again and again. Hallelujah. That's what resurrection is. We can, I don't want I don't want us to limit it to what happened at the tomb. Because here's the funny thing. The tomb was not like, it was like a, a flat surface and you could walk in. No. They like, they was like, oh, he said he's going to rise. They dug down. They built the tomb. And then they took the biggest folder they could find. And they rolled it down the hill to block the entrance. So it was humanly impossible to move the stone. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's some stones in our lives yes. that God is like, it looks humanly impossible to move. Mm -hmm. But I'm in the business of whatever the stone is, whatever you're looking at God saying, it's humanly impossible for this to happen. It's humanly impossible for my mom to see you, Jesus, for who you are. It's humanly impossible for my dad to be redeemed. It's humanly impossible for addiction to be broken off my bloodline. It's humanly impossible for my kids to come get saved. It's humanly impossible for me to go back and live my dreams. It's humanly impossible for me to write that book. It's humanly impossible for me to launch the business. It's human, whatever, it's humanly impossible. I'm here to tell you this morning that the same resurrection power that rose Jesus that redeemed us, that removed the stone is here to resurrect that thing in you. Hallelujah. If anyone is living proof, it's me. I tell y'all all the time. God is in the business of resurrecting and redeeming our time. It's yes. never too late. Hallelujah. And with that, I just want to say if you feel led to sow, your tithes and offering into uh, Fortified Life Church. It's been like five weeks since I said this, so I guess it's time to say it. You can cash up us at Fortified Life Church, or you can visit our website, fortifiedlife.church. And just so you know, if it's your first time watching us, we don't care if you give. But we do believe that God resurrects our money. According to Malachi 3.10, he says, bring in your tithes and your offering. That I would not pour out a blessing. And then further down, it says that those who don't bring it are actually living under a curse. Yeah. And so if you want to live in the abundant life of Jesus, don't give to us. Give to him. Hallelujah. Give to the Lord. Um, and with that, just a reminder that from here, we're going to go downstairs. The guys want to go pick up our food. Um, we're going to go downstairs. We're going to have brunch. Um, and then from there, we're going to go to the escape room. And we're going to be like Jesus and remove the stone. <laughs> We pray you have an amazing week. See you around.